no don't start hi everyone welcome to iac live online course today we are going to discuss nouns and the nouns these are the topics which we are going to start what is noun types of nouns countable and uncountable nouns nouns nembo nouns gender personification of nouns nouns possession apposition of nouns and finally we have application of nouns so this is all the theory part which we are going to discuss what types countable and uncountable nouns number nouns gender personification possession and apposition in examinations what you are going to do is this application part if you have the theory part you can apply anything easily so let's learn what exactly are this and this application part you will get in different forms one as error detection two as fillers or fill in the blanks three sentence improvements four close test so you may get in any of these four forms so let's begin with today's topic nouns starting with what so the question here is what is noun from childhood onwards we have been learning right since our childhood we have been learning what is a noun the same definition noun can be the name of a person place thing or an animal right so i can simply say noun as a naming word it can be name of a person place thing or animal so we can simply say noun as a naming word that means all our names are nouns all the names of places all the names of things and animals all these are nouns so coming to the second one that is types of nouns nouns are classified broadly into two types there are two types of nouns one concrete noun two abstract noun the first type is concrete noun the second one is abstract noun so what is this concrete noun any noun which we can see touch feel and measure a noun that we can see touch feel and measure is a concrete noun the noun which we cannot see touch or measure only we can feel it or experience it is called abstract noun i repeat concrete noun is a noun which we can see touch feel 
and measure you can measure that abstract noun is a noun which we cannot see or touch or measure but we can only feel it or experience it for example let me give you some examples pen what kind of noun is pen no doubt it is concrete noun chair concrete noun wisdom can you see it can you touch it no so absolutely it is an abstract noun what about a pen already we discussed it is concrete noun what about letter you are writing some letters with pen is letter an abstract or concrete can you touch it no you can see it but you cannot touch it right it is abstract so guys these concrete nouns are further classified into four types they are proper noun common noun collective noun and material noun so what are these let us see one by one the first one proper noun what is this proper noun i am manjusha so manjusha is my name so can i call you manjusha no can i call someone manjusha no why it is the name given to particular person we are in india india is our country can i call india as usa america no can i call america as australia no because it is specific to particular place so the name given to a particular person or place or animal or thing is called proper noun for example you can see this picture this is a picture of amitabh bachchan you know can i call amitabh bachchan no because it is specific to only that particular person so amitabh david rashmi bangalore india all these are proper nouns the names of mountains names of seas oceans rivers days nations nationalities any name which is particular is called proper noun let's see some examples here names of nations like india japan korea america china australia etc names of nationalities indian japanese korean american chinese etc names of famous monument so we have many famous monuments like the taj mahal the gateway of india the charminar etc days of weeks we have seven days a week and all the seven days have seven different names all days should be sunday means is it possible no isn't it so seven days has seven different names and those seven come under proper nouns monday sunday tuesday wednesday all days names of months again we have 12 months and 12 months have 12 different names january february march april so all those come under proper noun names of holidays and days of importance we have 365 days and 365 days have 365 different types of importance right the world literacy day the fathers day the children's day or you can take the festivals like diwali dashara new year day etc all these come under proper nouns so guys proper noun is a name given to a particular person place thing or animal now let's see the second type that is common noun so i am manjusha i cannot call someone as manjusha right can i call someone manjusha no but i am a girl can i call someone a girl obviously can i call another one as a girl obviously if of same kind that means here common noun is a name given commonly to a group of same kind of persons places animals or things boy girl student doctor teacher parent all these come under common nouns so look at these examples student river country month boy girl city are a few examples of common noun you can see here the picture of a boy i can call you boy if you are of same kind i can call you girl if you are of same kind that means this is commonly given so look at some more examples here names of persons like boy girl brother sister uncle aunt farmer 
soldier, etc. Names of animals like dog, cat, fox, monkey, rat, tiger, lion, deer, all these are the names of animals. Names of places like house, palace, room, garden, river, village, town, park, all are common nouns. And names of things, fruit, book, pen, chair, vegetable, shoe, basket, table, etc. come under common nouns. So these are two types of nouns, proper nouns, common nouns. Now let's move on to the third one, collective nouns. I have a key. You have a key. He has a key. They have some keys. So these all together, we kept to one thing. And that one thing, what do we call? It's a bunch, right? That means, what is bunch? A bunch of keys means a group of keys. We have taken collectively as a whole. Now, is collective noun singular or plural? Because we have many keys. Can we call it in plural sense? Can we take it in plural sense or singular sense? As I already told you, we are taking it as a whole. As a whole in the sense single entity. So what is this collective noun? A group of same kind of persons, places, animals or things taken together and treated as a single entity. For example, group of soldiers is called army. Group of keys, bunch. Group of grapes, it's also bunch. Group of ships, it's fleet. Group of sheep, it's flock, right? Look at some examples. A bunch of keys or you can simply say a bunch. An army of soldiers or an army. A fleet of ships, a mob of people, a flock of sheep. So we generally call people as crowd, right? Then what is the difference between crowd and mob? Here we have a mob of people. Why not it a crowd of people? What's the difference basically? We can say crowd of people that is also a collective noun or a mob of people that is also a collective noun. What's the basic difference? Crowd is just a group of people who act as spectators, who just listens and sees. That's it. It's a crowd. Whereas mob is a group of people who does unlawful activities or illegal things like during strikes and bun calls you might have seen a group of people who pelt stones who distract public assets such group of people who does some unlawful activities or illegal activities is called a mob so we have different collective nouns let us see some more examples a team of players a gang of bandits or robbers or thieves a hive of bees honeybees a bouquet of flowers a jury of judges there is one more collective noun for uh, jury that is judges that is anyone it's a bench you can say jury of judges, but jury basically is used for judgment of participations, for competitive you know, games, etc. Whereas bench of judges is used in court for justice. Next, a litter of puppies you can use for cubs also. A litter of cubs. A committee of members. A constellation of stars. A class of students. A string of pearls. So try to learn more collective nouns which will be useful for your examinations. So collective nouns are the nouns which are nothing but a name given to a group of same kind of persons, places, animals or things which are taken as a single entity. So remember guys, generally all collective nouns are treated as Singular nouns. All collective nouns are singular nouns. Hence, we use singular verbs along with them. However, there are some exceptions. We'll see them in application part. Now, let's move on to our fourth type that is material noun. So, what is this material noun? You can check here. What is this a picture of? Yes, it is gold. What is this a picture of? It's very clear. It's a 
cotton. So here we have gold, here we have cotton. Suppose you don't have any gold ornament with you, but you have two gold biscuits. What will you do with them when you attend some functions or parties? Can you hold like this and go? No. Can you paste here? Can you stick here? No. So gold is just a raw material or a substance. It is of no use unless we make it a thing or an ornament. Right? In the same way, cotton. Suppose you have only two pairs of dresses to wear, but at your house you have bundles and bundles of cotton. What do you do? Will you taste it? No way, right? So what are these? These are just raw materials. So the name of raw materials are substances from which things are made or formed come under material nouns. For example, gold, cotton, iron, silk, sugar, honey, water, all these come under material nouns. Let us see some more examples here. So gold, silver, tin, cotton, silk, wool, sugar, milk, wood, honey, all these are material nouns. Do you remember, from material nouns, we get things. From gold, we can get gold chain, right? From silver, we can get silver anklets. From tin, we can get a tin can or vessel. From cotton, we get cotton shirt. From silk, we can get silk saris or dresses. So there are different things. From wood, we got wooden chair, wooden table, right? So that is about material nouns. So these four nouns come under concrete nouns. So proper nouns, particular to a particular person. Common nouns, name given commonly to a group of same kind or class. Collective noun. Name given commonly to a group of same kind or class taken together and treated as a single entity. Material noun. The name of raw materials or substances from which things are made are formed. So these four nouns come under concrete nouns. Now let's see the second type abstract nouns. So we have already discussed that abstract nouns are the nouns which we cannot see or touch or measure. We can only Feel or experience, for example, kindness, goodness, theft, behavior, childhood, freedom, economics, physics. So all these are abstract nouns, right? Can you see kindness? Can you touch kindness? Can you measure kindness? He has 100 kindness or he has 1 kg of kindness. I have only half kg. Can we? No. Only we can feel it experience it through their actions right so those are abstract nouns these abstract nouns are further classified into four types there are four types of abstract nouns what are they let us see the first one is abstract nouns of quality talks about the quality of a person or a thing like honesty kindness goodness wisdom, knowledge, etc. Next, abstract nouns of action. It talks about action done like theft, hatred, mischief, behavior, judgment. Next, abstract nouns of state. It talks about the state of being. State in the sense, I'm not talking about the state like Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala. No, not like that. I'm talking about the state of being like Boyhood, youth, freedom, soundness, sleep, death. Yes, death is also a state. So these are states. Next fourth one, abstract nouns of various subjects. All subjects come under abstract nouns like mathematics. Can you see it? Can you touch it? Can you measure it? You experience it or feel it through calculations. Physics, economics. Botany. So these are the four types of 
abstract nouns. Let us see some more examples of abstract nouns before going further. Softness, hardness, whiteness, darkness, childhood, boyhood, adulthood, manhood, slavery, bravery, honesty, integrity, judgment, movement, theft, hatred, mathematics, grammar, chemistry, etc. All these are examples of abstract nouns. Do observe them. So some abstract nouns ends with ness. Some abstract nouns ends with hood. Some abstract nouns end with slavery. Some abstract nouns end with ty. See, ness, hood, ry, ty, and you can also see here meant. So these are some noun endings. So these are all called noun endings. So these words, whenever you have seen these endings, you can make sure that it is a noun. That word is a noun. Now, if you look at this softness, the word softness is formed from another word that is soft. Right? If you say judgment, you can observe that it is formed from another word judge so manhood is formed from man that means abstract nouns are formed from different words let us see what are their formation so look at this one abstract nouns are formed from words like boy boyhood hero heroism mother motherhood captain captaincy pilgrim Pilgrimage. So, make some more examples of such kind. If you observe boy, hero, mother, captain, pilgrim, what are they? They are examples of common nouns, right? That means abstract nouns are formed from common nouns here. Now, let me show you where abstract nouns form from adjectives. Look at this. Long. Abstract noun is length. Good. Goodness. Dark, darkness, brave, bravery, short, shortness, kind, kindness, wise, wisdom. So these are a few examples of formation of abstract nouns from adjectives. Now let me show you another formation from verbs. Live, life, act, action, see, sight. Move, movement, think, thought. So these are a few examples of abstract nouns derived from verbs. So guys, abstract nouns are derived from common nouns, adjectives and verbs. So that is the formation of abstract nouns. Common nouns, adjectives and verbs. So let me talk about these abstract nouns let's have a brief account of abstract nouns again abstract nouns are the nouns which we cannot see touch or measure only we can feel or experience so these abstract nouns are classified into four types one abstract nouns of quality talks about the quality of a person or a thing two abstract nouns of action shows action and derived from verbs three Abstract nouns of state talks about the state of being for abstract nouns of various subjects. Generally, abstract nouns are formed from common nouns, adjectives and verbs. So this is about abstract nouns. So, so far we have discussed what is noun and types of nouns, concrete nouns and abstract nouns. Hope this is clear. Do let me know through your comments if you got any doubt regarding these types now let's move on to further one that is countable and uncountable nouns so these all types of nouns can be broadly classified into two types countable and uncountable nouns what are countable nouns a noun which we can count as one two three four etc yes if you count a noun as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., that noun is called countable noun. 
for example one pen three pens here one three we are counting right now the question is which noun come under countable nouns we have discussed four types of concrete nouns and one abstract noun of course four types but we can call take as a single unit abstract noun so under countable nouns which noun fall is it proper noun can we count proper noun like india is a proper noun can we count proper noun one india two india three india can we no way we cannot count proper noun can we count common noun one boy two boys three boys four boys five boys can we count absolutely we can count common nouns that means we can count common nouns okay next can we count collective noun generally collective noun is taken as a whole and treated as single entity so we do not generally count however there are some exceptions where we can count some collective nouns where are some collective nouns are uncountable next can we count material nouns one gold two golds three golds can we no can we count abstract nouns one paint two paints three paints full paints no that means only common nouns come under countable nouns and guys as we are counting in numbers like 1 2 3 4 5 so these countable nouns can be two types one singular more than one plural i hope this concept is clear to you simple concept countable nouns are the nouns which we can count as 1 2 3 4 5 etc these countable nouns are of two types one singular more than one plural and only common nouns come under countable nouns now let's see uncountable nouns as the name itself indicates uncountable nouns are the nouns which we cannot count as 1 2 3 4 5 etc because they are uncountable what are these uncountable nouns guys as i told you we cannot count as 1 2 3 4 5 etc all uncountable nouns are singular all uncountable nouns are singular hence we have to use singular verbs whenever they are used as subject look at these examples sugar wood cotton gold silver steel salt etc come under uncountable nouns but we know these are material nouns that means these material nouns are uncountable now if you look at this wisdom boyhood goodness darkness thought action these are also uncountable nouns but basically these are abstract nouns that means both material nouns and abstract nouns come under uncountable nouns so is a clear countable and uncountable countable nouns we can count as 1 2 3 4 5 etc uncountable nouns we cannot count as 1 2 3 4 5 etc countable nouns can be either singular or plural uncountable nouns are always singular hence we have to use singular verb along with them only common nouns come under uncountable nouns where sorry only common nouns come under countable nouns whereas material nouns and abstract nouns come under uncountable nouns so this is a basic difference between countable and uncountable nouns which leads to another topic that is nouns number so guys so far we have discussed definition of nouns what types of nouns concrete and abstract and the four types from each and countable and uncountable nouns so far we have discussed three topics from nouns so please let me know through your comments if you have any question under this so i have to use another color sure definitely i pick blue now let me know if it is visible to you so let's move on to the next one so you want me to ex uh, explain collective noun i didn't understand uh, 
Swapna, your question you have written as collective. So do you want me to explain collective noun again? If so, let me talk about collective noun again. So collective noun, see, I have a key. I have one key. You have another key. A has two keys. I have one key. B has one key. C has three keys. Now we got total here. I have one plus three, four, seven. Total we have seven keys. And these seven keys we kept to a keychain, let us call. And there are seven keys to that. Now these seven keys commonly and collectively, we take it as a collective form. And we call these seven keys as a bunch. So a bunch means a collective form of keys. Now this word bunch is a collective noun. So bunch is singular or plural. See collective noun as I already told you is always taken as a single entity. That means taken as a whole one entity that means remember all collective nouns are always singular all collective nouns are always singular so i have a bunch of keys a bunch that means one bunch here is a bunch of keys that means again is indicate one bunch the army is marching in the ground here army is army is a collective noun for group of soldiers but we are taking as a whole is the jury has given its verdict jury we already discussed is a collective noun for judges right so jury has given that means we are taking it as a single unit so we have seen different examples for collective nouns right so a jury of judges or you can also say a, bun, a bench of judges a bunch of keys or a bunch of grapes an army of soldiers a constellation of stars a gang of bandits a gang of robbers a gang of thieves all these are singular because we are taking them as a whole in a single entity is that clear so okay fine you got it good so let's move on to the next concept then so we have done with three concepts three topics what types countable and uncountable now let's see the fourth one nouns number so what is number before that look at some examples guys cotton is an important crop i already told you all uncountable nouns are singular hence we have to use singular verbs only so cotton is an important crop gold is a precious metal sugar is obtained from sugar cane here cotton gold sugar these are material nouns right but they come under uncountable nouns now look at this poverty is the biggest form laughter is the best medicine so here poverty and laughter are abstract nouns so here you can see is is so abstract nouns and material nouns are uncountable nouns and all uncountable nouns are singular nouns hence we are using singular verbs is that clear now there are two things which we have to learn under this concept we can take it as a note what is that i told you here these three are material nouns and these two are abstract nouns right material nouns we know are from concrete nouns so what are concrete nouns the nouns which we can see touch 
feel and measure that means here these nouns can be measured right abstract nouns cannot be measured they are non measurable right but together they come under uncountable that means we can draw a conclusion from these two that material nouns can be measured but cannot be counted that means counting is different measuring is different i told you we cannot count gold like one gold two golds three golds four golds can be no but can we measure gold yes or no we go to shops like jewelry malls jewelry shops and we buy gold in grams that means gram is a measurement not counting look at these examples 5 kg of cotton we are not counting 1 2 3 cottons we are saying 5 kg of cotton we are measuring 2 grams of gold 1 teaspoon full of sugar 2 tons of steel etc are a few examples to make sure counting is different from measuring this is note 1 note 2 i already talked about this however i would like to give more emphasis on this what is that note to gold is a material noun tobacco is a material noun wood material noun iron material nouns so material nouns are uncountable but from gold we got gold chain right gold chain come under what type of noun my chain only gold chain your chain is not gold chain means is it correct no any chain that is made up of gold is gold chain that means gold is material noun gold chain is common noun tobacco material noun cigar common noun wood material noun table common noun iron material noun vessel common noun so material nouns are uncountable but the things which are formed from material nouns are countable because they are common nouns so is this topic clear guys i have given you two points as note one material nouns are uncountable but they are measurable two material nouns are uncountable but the things which are formed from material nouns are countable because they are common nouns so i hope it is clear to you and let's move on to the next concept now that is nouns number so before going ahead please let me know if you got any doubts so far any questions to put please text here and we'll discuss them before starting the next topic nouns number <laughs> as i didn't see any message here i hope it is clear to you all now let's move on to the next one nouns number here is a question to you what is number what do you think is number what is number ma'am 1 2 3 4 5 all these are numbers if that is your answer i'm sorry you're wrong i'm not talking about your arithmetic value i'm talking about number in english grammar in english grammar number is a form of a noun number is a form of a noun which shows whether it is one or more than one one means we generally say singular more than one we say it plural right so a number is a form of a noun which shows whether it is one or more than one number can be one that is singular more than one plural so it's clear right now the thing here is formation of plural nouns 
from singular nouns how to form a plural noun from a singular noun then you might answer me by adding letter s we get plural nouns if that is your answer let me show you some examples here pencil pencils so here you can see we added only s buffalo buffaloes here you can see we added es baby babies what did we do here we added es after replacing y with i right now you see here thief we replaced f with v and added es ox without replacing anything we added a new syllable en goose double o became double e woman a became e so you can see here clearly it is not always by adding letter s we get plural we get plurals in different ways there are different ways of forming plural nouns from singular nouns and if you question me how many ways i will tell you there are 16 ways of forming plural nouns from singular nouns is it required to learn all these 16 ways absolutely so that you will not do any spelling mistake because there are some exercise uh, section exercise based on spellings however even in error detection also you can write it correctly so let's begin one by one so i'm telling here these 16 ways as 16 sets of forming so let's move on to set 1 i hope this color is clear the blue one as you denied uh green and yellow i'm using this blue let me know if it is clear or not if not let me move on to the next color so however so let's move on to the set 1 in set 1 we form plurals by simple addition of letter s if you add letter s we get plurals 70% of nouns fall under this category i can say most of the nouns fall under this category so 70 persons as many as 70 persons uh, 70% of nouns fall under this category for example look at this bird birds simplest bat bats fan fans cap caps flower flowers game games doll dolls shirt shirts so all these come under set 1 by simple addition of letter s we are getting plural so that's our set 1 there is no rule here most of the nouns come under this category only now let's move on to set 2 so before that let me uh, give you some insight into this set 2 and then we will see some examples so what is this set to in set to we form plurals by adding es we form plurals by adding es but the question here is which nouns take es to form plurals of course they are singular of course they are countable and common nouns but which singular countable common nouns take es to form plurals that's my question anyone with the answer now it is visible okay thank you so which nouns which singular countable common nouns take es okay let me tell you that so if a noun ends with s or ss or x or sh or ch and z if a noun ends with s ss x sh ch and z or whatever you call z only those nouns take es 
Now, let's see some examples. Can you give some examples with the nouns ending with S? Anyone quick? Anyone? A word, a singular noun. It should be singular, not plural. Singular, countable, common noun, which ends with letter S. Anyone hurry up? No answer it. Okay, I'll give you a word. Try for another word. Here is my example. B U S. Right? Bus. So this is a singular noun, countable noun, common noun, ended with S. Now what do we do? We add E S to form plural that is buses. Right? Now, anyone, one more example for such kind? Singular, countable, common noun, end with S? No response at. Anyway, here we go. Gas. Ends with S. So again, we add ES and we get plural gases. Now let's see examples for double S. So give me an example for the nouns which end with double S. SS. Anyone? C L A S S. Class. So we add S and we get plural. classes right one more let me take a word uh, loss class good glass well done guys so I'm taking another word which you didn't give that is dress double s so we add es and we get dresses plural I hope it is clear yes exactly mass Grass, you're all correct, guys. Keep them coming. Let's move on to the next one. X. Now, give me an example for the word which ends with X. It should be singular noun, countable, common noun, which ends with X. X. Let me give you a word. Fox. Ends with yes. So, we add ES and we get plural foxes right good box right so we have tax well done guys so let me take one more word box add es we get boxes so tax box fax so all these are the examples for this x now let us see examples for the words which end with the SH. Let's see examples for words which end with SH. Any example for SH? SH. Okay, let me give an example here. Brush. Morning, morning we do. Brush. Exactly. Brush. So, brushes and here we got flash wish well done guys good keep them coming so wish flash so let me take and the word as wish wish ended with sh we add es and we get plural wishes yes now, let's move on to the next one. A board ends with the CH. We require a board which ends with CH. So, let's see. I'm giving a board with CH. Bench. CH. The plural is add ES. We get benches. Catch. Catches. Bunch. Good. Branch. Well done. And then I will give you a word which you haven't given. That is watch. Yes, latch. 
So watches. So I'm talking about this watch, wrist watch, right? So these are a few examples for words end with ch. Now that is the typical thing with z. At z. So can you give an example for the word which ends in single z or double z? It can be a z single or two z's. Z z or single z. Anyone? I will give one word with sing uh, double z which makes double. First, I'll give single quiz. So the plural is here. It has a small exception, guys. Here the plural is not with single z. It goes with double z. Quiz quizzes. Very good. I got a word there. Buzz. Our phones make buzz. Right. So buzz already double z is there. So we no need to make another z. So just simply add es. So these are examples of set two. However, guys, there is an exception here. So what is the exception? Means there are some nouns though end with ch. Some nouns though end with ch doesn't take es. They do not take es. So generally, if they end with ch, we add es. But there are some nouns which do not take es. Instead, they will take only s. Why? What are those nouns? Let me give you an example so that you can get the answer. Look at this example. Stomach. So, what is the plural? S T O M A C H S, not E S. Let me give one more example. Monarch. So, again, the plural of monarch is monarchs. C H S. Not ES. Why? Because here the CH is pronounced as CH. If you can understand Hindi, I think you know Hindi letters. Instead of CH, it is pronounced as K. The CH here is pronounced as K instead of CH. Hence, It is pronounced as k instead of ch. Hence, they will take only s, like stomach, k, monarch, k. But here you see bench, ch, watch, ch, bunch, ch, branch, ch, latch, ch. Have you observed the difference here? Right? So that is about our set two. Let's see some more examples of set two. Look at these guys. Beach, ch, added es. Brush, sh, sh, es. Fox, foxes. Bus, buses. Glass, glasses. Buzz, buzzes. So this is about set two. Now let's move on to the next one, set three. But I'm not just going to deal only set 3. I'm going to deal set 3, set 4 and set 5 at a time. Because you will know. So let's see. Set 3. Set 4. And set 5. So why am I taking all these three sets together? Let me tell you that. Here, the word ends with O. Here, also, the word ends with O. And here, also, 
the word ends with o then what is the difference if all the here end with o means here it ends with o but preceded by a vowel you know preceding right the previous letter is a vowel here it is preceded by a consonant here vowel here consonant here it is not precedent but it is a shortened form or of foreign origin it might be a shortened form or a foreign origin that means originated from foreign language then what to do add only s here add es here add only s now let's see some examples now guys can you give some examples for the words which end with o preceded by a vowel it should end with o and that o should be preceded the previous letter should be a vowel quick anyone one example where the word ends with o and it should be preceded by a vowel any one example from you guys anyone either kavya or lakshmi priya anjil anjila okay anjila d swapna anyone okay fine i'll be giving you some examples here no word fine so here we go look at this i have to take a video of you and develop it in a studio and add a studio if you ask me why to display it in a zoo to a bamboo and announce it on a radio see here all our words end with o and preceded by a vowel here we have tattoo good so tattoo is also the example good lakshmi priya so now you see guys here word ends with o preceded by vowel so what do we do we simply add yes videos right uh we simply add videos only yes. studio here also v add only s stereo same here also stereo only s zoo o o s bamboo o o s radio d i o s so is it clear guys words end with o preceded by a vowel add only s now let's see some examples for set 4 where the word ends with o preceded by a consonant it should be preceded by a consonant not a vowel so can anyone word ends with o and that o should be preceded by a consonant not vowel Yeah, we got zero. Good. 
yeah i'm going to come again with a particular order many people feel themselves as heroes but in fact they are zeros eating a potato with a tomato thinking of mango watching a volcano with an echo flamingo there are many words yes exactly tomato so here words end with o preceded by consonant so what do we do now we add es so he rose es g rose r o e s potatoes potatoes t o e s right tomatoes e s mangoes m a n g o e s volcanoes volca yes volcanoes echoes c h o e s so guys is it clear here so preceded by vowel s preceded by consonant e s now let's see examples for set 5 where i already told you it is either a shortened form of words from foreign origin so what is this shortened form let me give an example here then you can try some examples photo is a short form of what is the full form of photo anyone what is the full form of photo photo the full form of photo is okay photograph photo is a shortened form of photograph so photo is a shortened form hence we add only s photos very good photograph exactly now another word kilo kilograms kilometers liters whatever so we generally use kilos 2 kilos 5 kilos right next word is uh, robo we generally say robos robos robots right so add only yes robos now let me talk about foreign originated words so what is this foreign originated words let me tell you guys english is not its own language there are different words from different languages in english even our hindustani words i'm not talking about hindi i told hindustani that means we know in india there are different languages right many languages even our hindustani words are there in english language recently they have added nearly 70 plus words into english dictionary now most of the words in english language are taken from latin and greek languages such words are what i mean foreign originated words of words are foreign origin such words also take only s ending with o for example canto solo dynamo memento there are many such words so we add only s cantos solos dynamos mementos etc so that's about our set 3 set 4 and set 5 let us see some more examples guys look at these hero heroes potato potatoes mango mangoes volcano volcanoes flamingo flamingos echo 
echoes added es ending with o preceded by consonant stereo stereos video videos zoo zoos radio radios studio studios bamboo bamboos and it is o preceded by vowel so s kilo photo memento dynamo solo canto are the words and with o either shortened form or of foreign origin so these are set 3 set 4 and set 5 now let's move on to next next set set 6 and set 7 so what is this set 6 and set 7 let's see in set 6 and set 7 the word ends with y if it is preceded by a vowel then as it is add only s if it is preceded by a consonant then add es but before adding es we have to replace y with the i so that is a thing here set 6 set 7 let's see this set so look at this guys city ended with y preceded by what t t is a consonant so word ended with y preceded by consonant so then what we have to do replace y with i and then add es so cities t i e s y i because we are replacing y with i baby same replace y with i and add es babies lady same ladies library libraries story stories hobby hobbies can you use some more examples of this kind where a word ends with y preceded by a consonant try guys there are many such words preceded by consonant at least one word from you word ends with y preceded by a consonant yes we got some answers here lorry good lorries any other we got a word lorry okay ruby uh okay to some extent we can take ruby any other let me use simple word country right so ended in y preceded by consonant so add e y replace y with i and add s yes. guys uh, happy is not common noun happy is an adjective can we say happy no carry is not a noun it is a verb carries but of course follow the same but there is no happy so please uh, have a look we are talking about nouns we cannot pluralize all the words which ends with y only nouns i'm talking about right so that's about our set 6 now let's see set 7 in set 7 the word ends with y and y is preceded by a vowel then we add only s look at this key keys monkey monkeys donkey donkeys kidney kidneys day days toy toys one example for set 7 one example for set 7 try guys again joy joy is not 
a noun it's a state of being it's abstract form you can take it's we require countable common nouns joy you can take adjective uh, but here it can also take it as abstract noun but not a common noun so we require countable common nouns so no boy is watching here i didn't get the word boy no boy is watching right boy so boy ended in y preceded by vowel so the plural is boys so is it clear set 6 set 7 word ends with y preceded by vowel add s yes. preceded by consonant replace y with i before adding es so let's move on to our next set set 8 and set 9 in set 8 and set 9 both sets the words end with in both the sets the words end with in set 8 and set 9 let us see that the words end with f r f e the words end with f r f e excuse us for a moment
we are sorry for the inconvenience caused. So let's move on to set 8 and set 9. In set 8 and set 9, the words end with F or FE. The words end with F or FE. If a word ends with F or FE, then remember guys, here there is no hard and fast rule like take S, take ES when preceded by vowel, when preceded by consonant. Such rules are not there. So make sure you remember this well. So what is this? Means some words simply take S, whereas some words take ES, but only after replacing F or FE with V. We have to replace F or FE with V before adding ES. So these are our two sets, set 8 and set 9. Now let us see examples for this set. Word end with F or FE. First look at this word end with F. So calf ends with F. Here it takes ES after replacing F with V. So calves, half, halves, thief, thieves, self, selves, shelf, shelves, leaf, leaves. So these are for F. Now let us see F E. So life, lives, wife, wives, knife, knives. So replace F R F E with V and add E S. Set eight. Set nine without replacing anything. Simply add S. Belief, beliefs. Maybe you have a doubt. Let me clarify before you ask. Here. Why not it be believes? If that is a question, guys, let me know. This is noun, whereas this is verb. And again, we are discussing nouns. For noun form, it takes S. For verb form, replace F with V and add ES. Chief, chiefs. Chef, chefs, handkerchief, handkerchief, grief, griefs. Again, if it is verb form, V is. Next, cafe or cave, cafes or caves. Here it ended with FE. Safe, it is not the verb being safe. Safe is like a locker. Keep this gold and money in the safe. Safe means locker. That is a noun, then it takes ES. If it is a verb, again, V E S as a verb. Giraffe, giraffes. So I hope it is clear. Set 8 and set 9. In set 8 and set 9, words end with F or F E. If they end with F or F E, sometimes they take S, sometimes they take ES after replacing F R F E with V. There is no hard and fast rule here. So make sure you remember them well. While you are reading newspapers, magazines, journals or any such kind of books, please identify such words and try to remember. So that's about set 8 and set 9. Now let's move on to set 10. In set 10, the words are form the words form their plurals by replacing in fact it's not replacing by you can see here internal vowels are replaced look at this man the plural is men ye is replaced by e woman women here also A is replaced by E. Foot, double O became double E. Feet, goose, double O became double E. Geese, louse, O U became I. Lice, tooth, double O became double E. Teeth. If you have a doubt of this, what is louse? 
and lies. You might understand this. So theft is which type, ma'am? Thief. Thief. Uh, previous slide. If you talk, so thief. Here ended with F. So F is replaced by V and we add ES. Thieves. So that is offset 8. So I hope it is clear, Swapna. Thief. Okay. So what is laws? So laws lies. So you might have understood by the plural form of laws lies. So laws is small creatures which will be in your head, in fact, head, and sucks blood. People with lice generally massage their hair more, scalp, itching, right? So that is what loves the small creatures which sucks your blood and which will be on your scalp. And the plural is lice. So this is our set 10. Now let's move on to set 11. In set 11, there are four words which follow a specific pattern. What is this pattern? Means in set 11, the words take a new syllable. What is that syllable? E-N or R-E-N. They will take a new syllable E-N or R-E-N or they take a new word in addition to the existing word what is that look at this example child plural is children so it took a new syllable ren ox oxen took a new syllable en oxen brother you know brother the plural is brothers but there is another plural form brethren brethren let me give you one more word that is here we have cow. So cow, the plural is cows, but there is another plural form. We can take it as a collective form, kind. So kind is a, another plural form for cow. So these four words follow a specific pattern. And let me emphasize here, the word children itself is a plural noun. Many people say children's children's. No, guys, no children's. Children, people, these are plural nouns. Even though they do not end with S, they are plural because singular is child. So I hope this set 10 and set 11 are clear. If you got any questions, please let me know through your comments down below. So I'll be able to answer your questions. So let me know if you got any doubts in this set 10 and set 11 or any other sets, previous sets too. All right. Let's move on to the next one, set 12. In set 12, there are some words, in fact, the nouns, which have same singular and same plural forms. They're similar in their spellings as well as the pronunciation. Only through our sentences, we can differentiate them in singular or plural forms by using singular or plural verbs. Let me show you those examples. What is the singular for people? So the word people, the question here, people, is always a plural word. There is no particular singular word. However, we can say person. But person has plural form again. Persons. So this is exceptional word which is always plural. There are some words like that. Let me give you one more word. Police. The word police, especially when you use article, the police is always a plural word. There is no singular form. But you can say the police man or the police men to differentiate. But people is always plural. If you want singular, you can take another word and you can say person. P-R-S-O-N. Person. So there is no particular word. So people itself is a plural. However, there are exceptions. We'll see more exceptions and more rules in our application pattern. So is that clear? 
any more questions but people also has again another plural form peoples exactly that is what i'm telling you there are exceptions peoples is not always be used people peoples people generally use it in a wrong way so the word people is always plural the people are no people is but there is an exception where in only one case we can add s and use that is also plural only this is not singular when and what is that if you ask let me tell you the case when you are referring to different races or nationalities or religions if you wanted to separate them with different nations or nationalities or races or religions only in such cases we use peoples otherwise it is always people there is no plural for peoples people itself is plural but there is an exception case that is that case generally people generally say peoples peoples no guys no peoples only we have to use when we differentiate like i can say um, the peoples of south america and central america or north america that means i'm differentiating them based on their nationalities then it is okay but otherwise always people and is always plural people are so got it fine thank you right so that is about set 10 and set 11 so i hope it is clear let's move on to set 12 so as i told you in set 12 there are some words which have same singular and plural forms let's see what are those words what is the plural of fish what is the plural of fish what is the plural of fish answer me guys fast any one plural form of fish okay so the plural of fish is not fishes no no okay you people are answering it as fishes no the plural of fish is not fishes it is fish only right that is what i'm going to talk in our set 12 look at this sheep sheep deer deer fish fish reindeer reindeer hundred Hundred, thousand, thousand, basin, basin, swine, swine, dozen, dozen, score, score, species, species. These words have same singular and plural forms, including the spellings and pronunciation, also similar. I told you only in sentences we can show the difference by using singular verb or plural verb. For example. the sheep is grazing here the sheep is grazing here that means i'm talking about only one sheep but if i say the sheep are grazing here that means i'm talking about more than one sheep so here singular and plurals are same but again there are some exceptions especially with fish fish singular and plural are same fish fish only but we can use fishes also when when we are talking about different varieties or different fish from different water bodies i hope you got what i mean if there are different types 
or they are from different water bodies then we can say fishes but collectively fish fish only let me give one more example with this units of counting i gave him 500 rupees i gave him 500 rupees will you say 500 or 500 rupees no it's always 500 rupees isn't it in the same way thousand i have 10000 rupees or i have 20000 rupees will you say i have 10000 rupees 20000 rupees no so remember even units of counting like 100 1000 dozen score also singular only i mean same singular and plural However, there is exception. We will discuss an application. So, is it clear? Any doubts in this set 12? Same singular and plural forms. Same in the spellings and pronunciation. Only we can show the difference by using either singular or plural verb. Any doubts? Please let me know in set 12. Set 12. Any doubts, guys? So, no comment will be taken as granted for not having any doubts. Fine. What is the plural for smile? Okay. Uh, first, smile is what type of noun? Can you answer? No. Okay no doubt fine so lakshmi priya can you please tell me what kind of noun is smile is it a common noun is it a proper noun material noun collective noun abstract noun what kind of noun is smile anyone can you answer what kind of noun is smile here is our question what kind of noun is smile? Just question yourself. Can we touch smile? Can you see smile? You might answer, yes, I can see smile. I can see you smiling. But really, are you seeing me smiling? Are you seeing my smiling here? Or are you seeing my muscles? Or are you seeing my facial expressions? If you are seeing smile, exactly guys, it's abstract noun, right? If you can see smile, then can you tell me what shape it is, what color it is? No, it has no shape, no color because we cannot touch it. It's intangible. It's palpable or impalpable. It's abstract noun. So people generally say smiles, smiles kind of thing. But in fact, in formal English, mind it. It is smile because it is abstract noun. So very good guys. I'm happy that you got it right. So that's about set 12. Now let's move on to set 13. In set 13, I'm going to talk about a new type of noun that is compound noun. So for that, let us see. Compound noun. What is this compound noun? Guys, if you have watched the demo session, the basic class of English, you might have heard this compound sentence, right? So what is compound sentence? What is the meaning of compound? The word compound means combination of compound means combination of so compound nouns are the nouns which are formed by the combination of two or more words as a single unit right so two or more words combined together form as a single unit called compound noun for example let me take an example here mother in law 
mother in law sister in law step son passer by man of war are a few examples of compound nouns now what is the plural of mother in law can anyone say what is the plural of mother in law mother in law is a compound noun quick guys what is the plural of mother in law plural form for mother in law anyone same mother in laws okay so you people have written the plural form for mother in law as mother in laws okay sister in law it is sister in laws stepson stepson passer by passer by can we say passer by yes akash you are correct so it is not same it is not mother in laws it is not passer by so how to form plurals of compound nouns what is the plural form for compound noun and how to form the plural form for compound noun so let me tell you that see guys we can pluralize the compound noun no doubt in that but remember we have to pluralize the main word of the compound noun in this word mother in law what is the main word is it law no the main word is mother so the plural should be mothers in law it should be mothers in law now sister in law the plural is sisters in law not sister in law so it is sister in law now this is the main word now step son what is the main word step or son it is son not step so the plural is step sons right passer by what is the main word here it's passer so the plural is passers by now man of war what is the main word man or war the main word here is man so what is the plural of man it is men so men of war men of war so is it clear guys so remember compound nouns can be pluralized by only pluralizing the main word of the compound noun not by simply adding letter s at the end of the noun so is it clear this is our set 13 let us see some more examples here son in law sons in law daughter in law daughters in law step daughter step daughters commander in chief commanders in chief man of war men of war maid servant maid servants so is it clear our set 13 compound nouns can be pluralized only by pluralizing the main word not always at the end any questions or any doubts please let me know in step uh, set 13 compound nouns concept please let me know if you have any questions no questions guys 
fine then let's move on to next one set 14 so what is set 14 in set 14 there are some words which always end with s always end with s and they are always plural generally they do not have singular forms for example many people say it scissor 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 guys there is no scissor it's always scissors why because it is made up of two blades joined at a junction two blades joined at a junction right so two parts scissors no scissor in the same way pants don't say where is my pant give my pant red pant blue pant no pant it's always pants because you cannot wear only one leg no pant right it's always pants trousers shorts pyjamas thongs bellows pliers binoculars and you can see here pincers are a few examples spectacles two glasses joined to a frame attached to your frame so you cannot say specter spectacle right we always say specs spectacles and remember they're always plural and hence we have to use plural verbs scissors are jeans are pants are spectacles are because they are always plural. So any question here? Set 14. Ends with yes and are always plural. They generally have no singular forms. They do not have singulars. Remember, there are no singular forms. So always plural and always use plural verb. Are. Any questions, guys? Fine then. Let's move on to next set, set 15. In set 15, we talk about the nouns which always end with S. You can see here economics, politics, headquarters, civics, news, physics, innings, mathematics. You can take and the word genetics. Ends with S. Now, economics, civics, mathematics, all these are singular nouns or plural nouns? You can take a simple examples of example of mathematics. Is mathematics singular or plural? It's the name of the subject, right? It's always singular. Economics, singular, civics, singular, news, innings, headquarters, these are always singular. And they do not have plural forms. They are always singular. And they do not have plural forms. And hence, we have to use plural verb only. Economics is. Civics is. Mathematics is. Politics is. News is. So, there are no plural forms for them they are always singular that is our set 15 so any doubts from set 14 and set 15 please let me know set 14 ends with yes set 15 ends with yes but set 14 always plural no singulars set 15 always singular no plurals so any doubt or question please put forward in set 14 and set 15 Fine, there are no doubts, no questions. Good. So let's move on to the next one and last one, set 16. In set 16, we talk about foreign originated words. Let me talk about that before giving you the examples. In set 16, we talk about foreign originated words. So, what are these foreign originated words? In English, I already told you 
there are different words from different languages especially latin and greek languages so there are some words especially from latin and greek languages words which are from foreign languages they have different plural forms because they retained their original plural forms so grammarians while making this grammatical rules and pluralizing is taking place so at that time they did not change the plurals of these foreign originated words these words had retained their original plural forms hence you have to be careful and you know many more you know many examples you know of this kind for example formula what is the plural of formula it is formulae not formulas right you know that fungus fungi radius ready alumnus alumni curriculum curricula memorandum you know mou memorandum of understanding memoranda is a plural access access only what is the difference i became e synopsis i became e synopsis only criterion is singular criteria is plural so please uh, try to learn such words try to read and try to frame and try to add to this set of words set 16 so these are foreign originated words so while making plurals their original plural form is retained so they do not have special plurals the plurals are of foreign originated so we have to be careful with their spellings as well as the pronunciation you cannot always add letter s to every noun to make it plural <coughs> excuse me so these are our 16 sets of forming plural nouns from singulars so that's about nouns number so any questions in nouns number please let me know nouns number we have discussed the 16 sets 16 ways of forming plural nouns from singulars so if anyone got any question please let me know from these nouns number or else we'll move on to the next one that is nouns gender any question anyone fine then let's move on to our next concept nouns gender fine so what is gender what is gender and how many types of genders do we have gender is a grammatical distinction a grammatical difference arising out of sex of living beings and non living beings so gender is nothing but a grammatical difference a distinction arising out of sex of living beings and non living beings that is gender and how many genders do we have can anyone say how many genders do we have 2 3 4 how many genders do we have anyone no answer from you guys how many genders do we have if you answer it as 2 or 3 it is wrong we have four types of genders in english grammar no it is not two we have four types of genders in english grammar what are those four let me show you first masculine gender talks about male persons or animals two feminine gender talks about female persons or animals three common gender talks about either male or female persons or animals neuter talks about non living beings so it is not two or three so as you mentioned it is not two or three it is four so masculine feminine common 
and neuter gender. Masculine talks about male persons and animals. Feminine talks about female persons and animals. Common talks about either male or female. It doesn't mean transgender, guys. I'll give examples for your clarity. Neuter gender, all the non-living beings come under neuter gender. Let's see some examples. So let's see examples for masculine gender. Look at this. Man, king, lion, husband, Harish, Bhuvan, Raju. Some proper nouns also I have taken here to make sure you got the point. So these are examples for masculine gender. Under feminine gender, we have women, queen, lioness, lion, lioness, wife, Hashini, Bhavani, Rani are a few examples for feminine gender. Now, moving on to common gender, parent. Only father is parent, mother is not parent. Can you say? No. Parent can be either male, that is father, or female, can be mother. It's not just only father or mother. In the same way, doctor. Only ladies are doctor. Men are compounders. Means will they agree? No, right? So, doctor can be either male or female. That is what common gender. Neighbor. My neighbors are girls, ma'am. So, girls only neighbors. Boys are na not neighbors. Means is it correct? No. Neighbor can be either male or female. Enemy, servant, relative or a few examples for our common gender. Next, neuter gender. All the non-living things like store, book, leaf, fan, table, mobile, chair. So all these come under neuter gender. So I hope it is clear the four types of genders. Masculine, feminine, common and neuter gender. So any questions here in the types of gender? So gender is nothing but a grammatical distinction, difference, arising out of sex of living beings and non-living beings. And we have four types of genders, masculine, feminine, common and neuter gender. Any questions or doubts, guys? Fine. Now let's move on to the next concept. How to form feminine genders? That means we are going to learn formation of feminine gender, feminine nouns from obviously masculine nouns. We don't have 16 ways like number. We just have only five methods of forming feminine nouns from masculine. So let us see what are those five. Let us see method one. In method one, we use an entirely different word. We take an entirely different word to form plurals. At which gender? So, Swapna, your question at which gender? Let me question you back. At the, Does it have life? Does at have life? Is it a living being? Keeping Indian mythologies, Puranas aside, is earth a living being? Please answer. Is earth a living being? Anyone? Anyone can answer. Is earth a living being? So guys, Earth, according to English grammar, is a non-living being. So, all non-living beings come under which gender? It is? Neutral gender. Because Earth is a non-living being. Yes. Correct, you guys. Earth is not a living being. So, at come under neuter gender. Right? So, now let's see our method one. In method one, we use an entirely different word to form feminine. For example, boy, girl, man, women, husband, wife, brother, sister, king, queen, monk. You know what is monk, right? 
The feminine form of monk is nun. Now you might have an idea. What is the feminine form for Lord? I'm not talking about God. I'm talking about Lord. L-O-R-D. Lord. Lady. So Lord feminine form is lady. Nephew, niece. Son, daughter. Uncle, aunt. Cock, hen. Dog, bitch. Father, mother. Wizard. So what is the feminine form of wizard? I'm not talking about lizard. I'm talking about wizard. Who is a wizard? And what is the feminine form for wizard? Wizard is a male black magician. And the feminine form is witch. Right? Duke, duchess. Sir, madam. Horse. There is masking form of horse. I didn't give you. I will let you know at the end. Here we have feminine mare. Gandir. Goose. So this is our method one where we use an entirely different word. If you have any doubts in method one, let me know. And guys, when there is no different word or we cannot differentiate, especially for animals, we use he or she. For example, he buffalo, she buffalo. Only for animals, when there is no gender difference or distinction, we use he or she. So any questions in this? Method 1. I hope it is clear. Let's move on to method 2. In method 2, we form plurals by adding ESS. If we add ESS to masculine form, we get feminine form. For example, poet. What's the feminine form? Poetess. Utter. Artress. Lion. Lioness, manager, manageress, heir, heiress, priest, priestess, shepherd, shepherdess, steward, stewardess, host, hostess, mayor, mayoress. So these are some examples for our method too, where we get plural forms by simple addition of feminine forms, by simple addition of ESS to masculine form. Now let us see method 3. In method 3 also we add ESS to masculine form but only after dropping the first vowel from last. We have to drop the first vowel from last before adding ESS. For example look at this actor. Here what is the first vowel? From last, it is O. So drop O and then add ESS. Actress. So that is how the spelling has formed. Actress. That is our method 3. Let us see some examples of that kind. Method 3. Actor. Actress. Conductor. You see, drop the first vowel. O. Conductress. Hunter. Huntress. Negro. Negress because O is the first vowel, so drop O and add ESS. Tiger, tigress. Founder, foundress. Waiter, waitress. Drop E here. Instructor, instructress. Drop O. So that is our method three. By dropping the first vowel from last and adding ESS to masculine form at the end, we get feminine form. So that is about method three. Now let's move on to method 4. Method 4, there is no particular rule. Sometimes it drops and adds something, two letters, three letters. Or sometimes it drops and adds nothing and makes feminine form. So it is like irregular pattern. There is no particular pattern. Hence, method 4 is called irregular formation. And before giving you more examples for irregular formation, let me ask you, can you tell me the masculine form for widow? Guys, quick. What is the masculine form for widow? You know widow, right? A female whose husband died. So, a female, 
wife who lost her husband is widow. Now, what is the masculine form? Very good. And Zilla, your answer is correct. No, Lakshmi Priya, I want the masculine form for widow. So, the masculine form for widow is widower. Many people know widow, but uh, unfortunately, in India, we do not know a husband who lost his wife. So, that is widower. See here, we dropped ER to make feminine form, right? So, that is how the words are there in method 4, irregular formation. Let me show you some examples. Abbot, abyss. So, here you see, we dropped OT and add ES. Duke, Duchess, KE, replaced by CHESS. Emperor, so here you see here, E-R-O-R is replaced by R-E-S-S, Empress. Governor, same way, governess. Prince, add double S, we get feminine princess. Fox, vixen. Hero, heroine. Bride, groom is masculine. Bride is feminine. Widower, widow. Lad, lass. Senor, senora. Master, mistress, like headmaster, headmistress. So is this clear or any doubt in method four? Any meaning if you want me to tell you or any doubt in method 4, please question. Please uh, ask me. I will clarify. About Abbas, Duke, Duchess, Emperor, Empress, Governor, Governess, Prince, Princess, Fox, Vixen, Hero, Heroine, Bridegroom, Bride, Widower, Widow, already discussed, Lad, Lass, Senor, Senora, Master, Mistress, any question or any doubt or any meaning would you like to know? Please let me know through your questions. Is senor an English word? It is foreign originated word. It is taken from Italian linguist. Yes, it is originated from Italian. So it is just like senor, senora is like Mr. and Mrs. So just like that. It is not English word. It's a foreign originated English word. Any other questions? It is senor, not senior. It is S-I-G and O-R-G is silent like sign. S-I-G and sign, right? Not sign. Same way. Any other questions? Fine then. So that is our method 4. Now let's move on to next one. Method 5. In method 5, we talk about the compound nouns. We already we discussed compound nouns means combination of two or more words to form a single noun is called compound noun. Here we are particularly discussing the compound nouns formed by the combination of two words. Right? That means compound nouns of two words replaces their prefix or suffix to make plurals. I mean feminines. For example, milkman and the feminine is milkmaid, not milkwoman. See, here this is not the milkmaid which he used to make kheer, not that milkmaid. Milkmaid is a woman who supplies milk. So the masculine is milkman feminine is milkmaid not milk women look at this grandfather grandmother man servant maid servant not women servant it is maid servant salesman sales women not sales maid landlord already we discussed lord lady so landlord landlady peacock and the feminine form is Pihen, bull cough, cow cough, because bull, cow. Washerman, not washermaid, it is washerwoman. So, this is our method 5 for compound nouns formed from the combination of two words. They replace the prefix or suffix to form feminine forms. 
so these are the five methods of forming feminine nouns from masculine hope it is clear any doubts please put forward and then we will see some examples for masculine and feminine forms of animals before moving on to animals please let me know if you go to any doubt in these five methods of forming please so no message so no doubt i will take it as granted so let's move on to animals so now here is a question what is male horse called what is male horse no it is not horse if you take if you tell male horse is horse no it is not horse what is male horse called anyone male horse no it is uh, your answer is for feminine female horse is mare not male horse this is a feminine form i want masculine form anyone mare mare no no male horse is called stallion yes you heard me right so male horse is called stallion not horse mare is a female horse now duck is duck male or female answer this question enough is duck male or female what do you think is duck male or female answer please male or female no lakshmi priya is duck male or female female good good swapna so duck is female then what is male duck called what is male duck called so male duck is called drake it's drake so let me give some more examples so guys oh it's clumsy tiger is male tigress is female lion is male lioness is female horse is male stallion i hope you can see if you cannot please let me know so stallion is male mare is female goose gander is male geese or goose is female I have taken his plural fox male vixen female drake is male duck duck is female dog is male bitch is female bull is a male cattle cow is female cock male hen female sheep male is ram female is not sita for your kind information don't write the female form of ram as sita e e w e e is a female form of sheep that is male is ram female is e goat masculine is he goat feminine is she goat as i told you when there is no gender distinction we generally use he or she for animals he buffalo she buffalo he goat she goat bear he bear she bear as they have very nice names jack as genius sparrow cock sparrow hen sparrow so cock sparrow masculine hen sparrow feminine so these are a few examples for animals both masculine and feminine forms so guys this is about gender so let me know if you got any questions regarding gender please post your queries or questions in the comment box the chat box please let me know if you got any doubts regarding gender we discuss what is gender and methods of forming feminine gender and we also learned some examples from um, animals for masculine and 
feminine. So no questions, fine. Fine then, let's move on to the next concept. So far we have discussed what is noun, types of nouns, countable and uncountable nouns, noun, nembo, noun, gender. So these are the concepts which we have discussed. So here you have some questions. Please don't use blue, sure. Clear, ma'am? No doubt. Fine. I won't use blue and PPT. Fine. It's not blue, in fact. Anyway, now let's move on to the next concept. Okay, it's not writing there. Let me check here. Our next concept is personification. So very interesting concept and very useful concept for examinations. So let us see what is this personification. The word personification means giving life to non-living objects, not with mantra or tantra, in our imagination. Giving life to non-living objects like sun, moon, earth, nature, spring, etc. in our imagination is called personification. You see, in olden days, poets in their poetry use it to describe the non-living objects like sun, moon, earth, etc. as if they had life. But already, as someone asked us today, is earth uh, masculine or feminine? Generally, non-living being. So it is neuter. But under personification, we can tell the gender only when we personify because we are giving life here, right? So, what is that life and what is that? As I already told you, poets use it to personify the non-living objects, not only poets. If you watch the fantasy movies, like many fantasy movies are there, Harry Potter, Beauty and the Beast, and Aladdin, Indian. So, if you watch, can you tell me what is the vehicle of Harry Potter? It's a broomstick, right? Will our broomstick fly? No way. Aladdin's vehicle? Carpet. Will our carpet lift us? No way. In Beauty and the Beast, if you watch it, the movie, the cup speaks, the piano dances, the clock talks and walks. This is all our imagination. That is what personification. So, flying car. Yes, exactly. So you got, guys. So pet sonification means giving life to non-living beings. Now, when we give life to non-living beings, the immediate question that arises is gender. When a baby was born, what do you ask immediately? Baby boy or baby girl, right? In the same way, when we give life to non-living objects, the immediate question is gender. What does this come under? What does it come under? Is it masculine or feminine? We have rules. The grammatarians formulated some rules. According to the rule, objects known for strength and violence come under masculine gender. Objects known for strength and violence come under masculine gender. Whereas objects known for beauty, gentleness and gracefulness come under feminine gender. Is that clear guys? Objects known for strength and violence come under masculine. 
whereas objects known for beauty gentleness and gracefulness come under mass uh, feminine now let us see some examples which objects come under masculine which objects come under feminine sun comes under no doubt for is harsh rays and very hot we know its strength so when pets sonified sun comes under masculine not feminine what about earth now you can say earth so now earth comes under feminine right now moon masculine or feminine it's very cool everyone wanted to see so beautiful poets used to take moon as an object to describe female so it is feminine gender moon comes under feminine gender but don't go according to indian mythology because in indian mythology we call moon as chandrama right so no it's not masculine according to english grammar it is masculine according to indian mythology but we have rules we got rules right so moon feminine what about death death no doubt it is masculine summer masculine winter masculine not feminine time masculine ship feminine hope feminine messy feminine library feminine justice feminine war masculine peace feminine right let me show you the examples here so listen giving life to non living beings in our imagination is personification when we personify we generally ask question what is the gender either masculine or feminine so when we ask about gender as i told you objects known for strength and violence come under masculine gender like the sun summer winter death autumn time war etc and objects known for beauty gentleness and gracefulness come under feminine the moon the earth spring spring season spring nature library justice mercy peace hope charity etc come under feminine gender now whenever we personify that means when we give gender remember we have to use pronouns related to those gender only he for masculine she for feminine or his her his for masculine her for feminine so do remember only when we personified when we do not personify there is no gender when there is no gender it should be neuter when it is neuter we have to use it or its only only when we personify we give gender only when we give gender we'll give masculine or feminine nouns otherwise neuter gender neutral pronouns so let's see some examples right look at this the sun sheds his beams on rich and poor alike his beams see here we have personified when we personify sun comes under masculine hence we use his peace has her own glory peace is masculine so her own glory war is more majestic in his strength war masculine the ship has lost all her boats in the stormy sea i already told you ship is feminine though it is very huge it is graceful gentle it tolerates you unless something happen i it hits to iceberg or something like titanic you watch with that right so the moon has hidden her face behind a cloud moon 
feminine so her the spring you know spring season i didn't mean the spring spring season autumn season spring so what is autumn season in autumn season you know all the leaves fall and trees looks very ugly and dry so that is masculine spring season you see all the leaves start you know blossoming the flowers blossoms and it looks so green and beautiful so that is feminine so the spring has spread her mantle of green over the earth so spring is female the nature offers her lap to him that takes it the sun came from behind the clouds and with his brilliance tore the veil of darkness very nicely described so this is how the sun rise happens the sun came from behind the clouds and with his brilliance the sun rays tore the veil veil means you know right mask of darkness so remember only when we personify we give gender only when we give gender we have to use those pronouns otherwise neuter gender neuter pronouns it or so hope it is clear to you if you got any doubts under personification please uh, let me know through your comments here any doubts under personification any doubts no no doubts guys so i hope this is clear to you so gender and personification so from gender and personification you can expect at least one question either from gender or personification so i hope this concept is clear to you so let me go to the next concept the next concept is nouns possession what is possession the word possession is taken from possess which means to own so the word possession is taken from possess which means to own so possession talks about the ownership of nouns so possessive nouns are nouns possession generally talk about the ownership of nouns owning something so that's about nouns possession so let us learn how to give possession and the rules associated with that so let's see how to give possession generally how do we add possession to a noun we generally denote possession by adding apostrophe s if you add apostrophe s to a noun it indicates possession for example you can see here boy the possession is boys this is that boys book so we are talking about the ownership of boy and you can see one more go uh, one more example let us take girl girls ramu ramos sita sitas but what if it is a plural noun what if it is boys then can we add apostrophe s can we say boys we can see very clearly no we cannot say then how to add how to indicate possession for plural nouns so let me tell you that so guys remember if it is a singular noun boy what do we do we add apostrophe s and we get plur uh, the possession boys if it is a plural noun 
boys then we cannot add apostrophe s yes. we add just apostrophe and we have the plural apostrophe that is possession boys 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 so this is for plural now what if look at this is it singular noun or plural noun james it's a singular noun so what do we do apostrophe or apostrophe s yes. singular noun means apostrophe s yes. but even though it is singular it ended with s so we add only apostrophe so james now look at this children singular or plural children is a plural noun now apostrophe or apostrophe s yes. plural noun means only apostrophe but this doesn't end with s yes, so we add apostrophe s yes, and we say children's that's why we say children's day right now look at this so you understood right basically if it ends with s only apostrophe if it doesn't end with s apostrophe s now here is a question for you guys b o s e so what is the possession is it apostrophe or apostrophe s quick is it apostrophe or apostrophe s for b o s e quick guys is it apostrophe or apostrophe s yes. both doesn't end with s yes. only apostrophe yes kartikeyan you are right why so we add only apostrophe not apostrophe s yes. both why because even though it doesn't end with s you see the pronunciation both sound hence we add apostrophe so you have to be careful no akash nirmal it is only apostrophe not apostrophe s yes, because even though it doesn't end with s yes, the sound it ends with sound s so only apostrophe so be careful with this you have to check with ending you have to check with pronunciation also so it is both books shubhash chandra bose life history autobiography or biography so whatever you can so let us see some examples the boys books here boy is singular so we add apostrophe the boys books boys plural so we add only apostrophe there apostrophe is here only apostrophe for jesus sake jesus singular but ended with s so only apostrophe women's college here women plural but doesn't end in s so it doesn't end in s so we add apostrophe s so women's college so this is about indication of possession to nouns i hope it is clear so this is how we denote possession to nouns now let us learn the usage the rules associated with possession when to give when not to give how to give how not so let's see those under usage so the first one guys be uh, careful we generally give possession only to living beings we do not give possession to non living objects so we can say the boy's books because boy is living being we can say ravi's bag ravi is a living being governor's bodyguard governor is a living being but you cannot say table's leg is table a living being 
No. So do not say the table's leg. Then how to denote possession? Means by using preposition of. If we indicate to indicate possession to non-living beings, we can use preposition of and you can say the leg of the table, the cover of the book, not the book's cover, the roof of the house, not the house roof. Remember, we have to give possession only for living beings, not for non-living beings. Is that clear? That is our first usage. Only for living beings. For non-living beings, you can use preposition of and you can carry on with the possession. Now, let's move on to the second one. Second rule or second uses. Just now we made rule and we are going to break the rule. English is full of exceptions. How many rules we are learning, those many exceptions also we learn. So, here is the exception case one. We can give possession for non-living beings when we personify because already we learned when we personify we give life when we give life that means they become living beings and hence we can give possession see nature's law fortune's favor a duty's call a death's door so when personified when personified objects we can give possession so that is about the second one Second uses are rule two. Rule three, one more exception. We can give possession to units of counting, like units of time, units of space, distance, or units of weight. We can give possession to units of time, units of distance, that is space, and units of weight, like these. Look at these examples. A day's march. Day is a unit of time. A week's holiday. Week is a unit of time. In a year's time. Year is a unit of time again. A stone's throw. Stone is a unit of. Give me answer guys. A stone's throw. Stone is a unit of time or space or weight. A stone's throw. Stone is a unit of what? Time or space or weight. Hurry up, answer please. Weight. Any other answers? I'm sorry to say you're wrong. See, a stone's throw doesn't indicate weight. For example, ATM is at a stone's throw from our institute. That means if you throw a stone, it falls. It indicates distance nearby. Remember, a stone's throw indicates nearby, closeness. So, it is a unit of space, distance, not weight. Next. A foot's length, again, foot is a unit of distance, length. A pound's weight, it's talking about weight. See so here, for units of time, units of space and units of weight, we gave possession. That is our third one. So guys, it is not unit of weight. It's a unit of distance because it indicates closeness it's talking about distance how close it is nearby so let's move on to the next one another exception that is our fourth rule the fourth use is says we can give possession to some phrases like at fingers and for mercy's sake for justice sake for his arts content at his wits i a boat screw. Why? What are these phrases? These are called established expressions. These established expressions must be used as they are without changing them according to the new grammatical rules. So these established expressions you have to be 
keeping them in your mind you have to remember them in fact so please do learn them carefully so to his heart's content for mercy's sake for justice sake at his fingers and a board screw at his wits eye so these are established expressions which has to be used as they are without any correction that's our fourth one let's move on to fifth one the fifth one you have to listen properly and focus in order to understand what is that we can give possession to a trade a profession or a relation we can give possession to a trade a profession or a relation if it denotes a building or a place we can give possession to a trade what do you mean trade it's a business profession you know relation relationship only when it denotes a building or a place why what happens what happens what is that building or a place a school college temple church market so these are a few places so for example she has gone to the bakers look at this she has gone to the bakers so what is the meaning of this sentence she has gone to the bakers so what is the meaning of this sentence she has gone to the bakers who is baker who is baker baker trade or profession or relation baker is a person who bakes cakes see here it indicates profession when you say she has gone to the bakers the actual sense here is the bakers shop see the meaning here without writing the shop if we give possession it denotes the same meaning that is our fifth one let us see some more examples i hope this is clear to you look at these examples she has gone to the bakers here it indicate bakery shop or bakers shop which we generally say bakery shop tonight i am dining at my uncles so guys you see here tonight i'm dining at my uncles here uncle is a relation right at my uncles what does it mean i didn't say with my uncles i said tonight i'm going to dine at my uncles it means my uncles house can you tell me the way to st paul's or st anne's so what is the st paul's st paul's can be either a church or a school or college whatever is famous in that area so saint paul 
school or Ch saint paul church instead of that it can indicate so you can see here it denotes a place or a building now look at this one he was educated at Ravindra Bharathis. He was educated at Ravindra Bharathis. So, what does this mean? Ravindra Bharathis. It doesn't mean Ravindra Bharathi Auditorium, right? So, because it gives us the sense of education. So, it means Ravindra Bharathi School. Or if there is a college, Ravindra Bharati College. So look at this, guys. Here, bakers indicate baker's shop, profession. Uncles indicate uncle's house, relation. St. Paul's indicates St. Paul's church or school. Talking about place. Next, Ravindra Bharati's indicate Ravindra Bharati school or college. Again, you're talking about a place, denoting a trade, a relation, or a profession. So, this is our fifth rule or the fifth uses of possession. So, so far we have discussed five rules. First one, possession cannot be given to non-living objects. We have to give only for living objects. However, we can denote possession for non-living objects by using preposition of. Rule number two, we can give possession for personified objects. That is our rule number two, personify. Rule number three, we can give possession for units of time, space and weight. Rule number four, established expressions. In English, we have some established expressions or phrases which we have to use them as they are. Rule number five, for trade or profession or relationship denoting a building or a place we can give possession without writing entirely uncle's house, baker's shop, St. Paul's church, Ravindra Bharti school, etc. We can give possession to denote the same meaning. So that is about the uses of possession. Please let me know if you have any doubts in this usage. The five rules and we talked about possession. Please let me know if you have any doubts in this usage. Is that clear? Please let me know through your questions. I hope this is clear to you. So no question, no doubt. Fine. Now, I'm going to some more exceptions. Let me make it as a note. See, when I told boys books, what is the meaning of boys books? It means the books belongs to the books belong to are the books owned by the boy, right? So it indicates ownership. Here it denotes ownership, right? Now look at this one. Shiva's temple. Shiva's temple. Is a temple owned by Lord Shiva? What does it mean? Shiva's temple. Boy's books. Books belong to the boy. Books owned by boy. Then what about Shiva's temple? Is a temple owned by Lord Shiva? Baba's temple, Maka temple, Ma's temple. We'll say, right? So what does it mean? Does it indicate ownership? Do they own it? No, right? So what does it mean? Please answer. What does Shiva's temple mean? 
Shiva's temple. What does it mean? What it means? Answer anyone? Does it indicate ownership? No. Then what does it indicate? Here it means temple dedicated to Lord Shiva. So here it indicates dedication. Here it indicates dedication. Now look at this. Chetan Bhagat's books. Chetan Bhagat's books. Doesn't mean uh, books owned by Chetan Bhagat? No. What does it mean? Books written by Chetan Bhagat. So, here it indicates authorship. It indicates authorship. Look at this example. Mm. So, if you watch the movie Bahubali, you might have known this uh, famous director, Raj Mouli. So, everywhere you will see Raj Mouli's film. That means, is that film owned by Raj Mouli? No. Then what? The film directed by Raj Mouli. So here it indicates direction. A Shakespeare's play. Does it mean play owned by Shakespeare? No. It can be play written by Shakespeare or maybe if he directed the play directed by Shakespeare. What I wanted to communicate here is the possessive case which is also called genitive case doesn't always indicate ownership. It indicates ownership. It indicates ownership, possession, origin, dedication, authorship, direction and much more. So guys, remember, possession always doesn't denote ownership only. So, based on the context of the sentence, we have to learn what it indicates. So, I hope this is clear about possession. So, that is what possession is. So, we have discussed what is possession and also we have discussed the uses of possession and we have discussed some exceptions with possession. Any questions? Please let me know, guys, under possession. Please shoot your questions fast. So that we can move on to the next concept. Is that clear the word possession and what exactly it denote? Please let me know if you have questions or else we'll move on to the next concept. Left out with only one concept for the theory part and then we'll see the application part. No questions? Fine then. Okay. So let me take it as granted for no questions. So let me again tell you what we have discussed. Let me list it out. We discussed what types countable and Uncountable nouns, 
nouns number nouns gender personification of nouns nouns possession and we left off with one concept that is apposition nouns apposition and finally your part that is application so guys so here we have discussed this now let's see the last concept from theory apposition so what is this apposition so when two nouns let me see noun 1 and noun 2 when two nouns noun 1 and noun 2 are placed next to each other and noun 2 is describing noun 1 noun 2 is describing noun 1 then these two nouns are said to be in apposition i repeat when two nouns noun 1 and noun 2 are placed next to each other just separated by a comma and noun 2 is describing noun 1 the two nouns are said to be in apposition for example such an the indian cricketer scored 2000 runs in 2003 just an example so if you look at this sachin is noun one the indian cricketer is noun two according to the sentence who is sachin the indian cricketer you see noun two is describing noun one hence these two nouns are said to be in apposition let me give one more example i k gujral who is i k gujral who is i k gujral if you don't know you'll find like i don't know but i'll help you with noun 2 former prime minister so now you got the point who is i k gujral former prime minister so i k gujral former prime minister is no more now you can see here so according to the sentence i k gujral noun 1 who is i k gujral former prime minister noun 2 so noun 2 is describing noun 1 hence these two nouns are said to be in apposition this is a very small concept but very important concept now you understood apposition i hope it is clear to you if it is now here is an application part when two nouns are in apposition and if you wanted to give possession when two nouns noun 1 and noun 2 are in apposition and if you wanted to give possession to which noun do you add apostrophe s yes. we generally indicate possession by adding apostrophe s yes, right to which noun do we add apostrophe s yes? is it first noun or second noun or both nouns according to the rule when nouns are in apposition to indicate possession we add apostrophe s to not noun 1 it is noun 2 we add apostrophe s to noun 2 that means let me give an example here such 
in the best batsman's bat was auctioned yesterday so if you look at this who is sachin according to the sentence sachin is the best batsman so the best batsman's bat see we have added possession to noun to so that is the application part when nouns are in apposition if you wanted to give possession we add apostrophe yes to the second noun not for first noun not for both nouns it should be always for second noun let me give one more example i visited shakespeare comma the poet's house last year so according to the sentence who is shakespeare according to the sentence shakespeare is the poet so we have i visited whom i visited house whose house the poet's house who is that poet shakespeare see again we added possession to noun to so that is about apposition so this completes our theory part for today so tomorrow we will see application part so for application part guys remember you have to have the complete idea about all these what we have discussed so far so we have discussed what is noun types of nouns countable and uncountable nouns number nouns gender personification possession apposition and finally tomorrow we will be seeing application so please let me know if you have any doubts in this concept before we sign off for today so let me know if you have any doubts so tomorrow we'll be seeing application for that application we require to have this knowledge any doubts or any questions fine there are no questions or no doubts so i'll be seeing you tomorrow at 6 am so we have class tomorrow at 6 am please come uh, attend the class with fresh mind as well as with the knowledge of these for the application part because tomorrow you are going to apply i want you to apply and answer for the questions which i post